it's educational content. And the goal of the channel is to get discovered. And the question, how do I stand out from other creators in my niche, which is zoology? Okay, so when it comes to standing out in your niche, and this applies niche or niche, however you say it, you know, you can still stand out in it, you know, regardless of how you say it. But what you want to think about when it comes to um, standing out in the niche of content that you're making, it doesn't matter if you're doing gaming content, it doesn't matter if you're a marketer, it doesn't matter if you are doing thriller content, it doesn't matter if you are doing reaction videos, whatever. When it comes to standing out on YouTube, one thing that's going to help is knowing who it is that you're making content for. But another thing is just being as you as you can possibly be. And I know this sounds corny and it sounds like, you know, weird and all that good stuff, um, but it's legit. Nobody on the platform, people will imitate you, especially if your channel starts doing well. People will take your ideas. They'll try to do the same thing that you're doing. They'll use the same graphics that you use because they can. They will, you know, make the same videos on the same topics that you make because they can. They will use the same exact titles you use because they can. They'll use the same descriptions that you use because they can. They'll use the same exact tags that you use because they can, with the exception of your channel name, because that's against the terms of service. But they can do all of that stuff. But the one thing that nobody can do is they can't be you. They can't communicate in the way that you communicate. They can't care about the things that you care about. They can't express themselves in the way that you express yourself. And when it comes to YouTube, that's the thing that gets people to connect to you and grow a strong community on the platform. You start resonating with people who over time get to uncover like, oh, hey, this person, you know, they think about things in this particular way. And I think about things in that particular way too. So, you know, right out of the gate, when I have the option out of, you know, 50 different channels that make the same type of content, I'm actually gonna watch this one or at least watch this one more, or I'm at least gonna make sure that I watch this one along with the other ones because I resonate with that particular person. So, you know, being the best you that you can possibly be or the most authentic you that you can possibly be is the best way that you can stand out on YouTube. Now, with that out of the way, when it comes to the branding that we were talking about before, um, one of the things that we talked about was the visual branding side of things, but then there's also the deeper side. So the deeper side is things like having repetitive elements in your content. Now, this particular thing isn't going to necessarily um, resonate that much with new viewers because people have to watch your content more than one time in order to be able to pick up on some of these things. But other things that are extremely effective um, in terms of standing out on YouTube is having recurring themes through what it is that you're doing or recurring happenings or recurring people or whatever it happens to be in your content. So for example, Casey Nice stat for a period of time. Um, he might still, I haven't watched his content in a while. Basically with Casey Neistat, one of the things that he had for a while is he had his UPS delivery guy and the UPS delivery guy became a thing. And because that UPS delivery guy was a thing, anytime that person showed up in the videos, the regular viewers would be like, oh, you know, there he is again. Oh, this is awesome. You know, and they would say like hi to him in the comments and like that kind of stuff. It was like a big deal when this person showed up. So basically what he did in that situation is he made that person a recurring theme. And then the community got behind it in that situation as they started noticing that, hey, this person pops up. Casey makes a big deal about it or, you know, kind of includes that person and what's going on. Now, you know, it's a thing. The same exact thing applies to, you know, like, for example, um, here on on this channel, you know, like this is this is a how to channel. It's a help channel. This isn't like a personality channel per se. You know, one of the things that, you know, that happened happened here in the live streams was, you know, like M&Ms became a thing. I'm not doing it that much anymore because my brother's not here. But, you know, um, the whole M&M thing became such a thing here that, you know, um, when I would go to um, events in the States, people would, you know, give my brother and myself, they would give us bags of M&Ms or boxes of M&Ms. And in some cases, we got like big things of M&Ms. I know Roger, he's in here. He was actually the first person to give me a big bag of M&Ms, <laughs> Roger Wakefield. But like people, you know, they notice that kind of thing. That's one step deeper side of your branding, right? Um, but that's one step deeper into that is because it starts helping people connect to what it is that you're doing and, and understand, not understand, but be a part of the nuances of what it is that you're doing on your YouTube channel. And the really cool thing about that is it also helps people in addition to helping them being included in what it is that you're doing. It's also something to where in that particular case, like with M&Ms, it's something that if somebody's out in the world during the time that we were doing the M&M thing, if somebody's out in the world and they see a packet of M&Ms, they're not always going to think of us. However, there's going to be some people that when they see M&Ms, they're going to be like, oh, you know, it, and just for a minute, right, then we're going to come to mind. And that's one thing that helps us stand out in that situation. Other things that you can do in order to stand out on YouTube are to look at what everybody else is doing and try to think like, what can I do different? So as an example of this, when I first started YouTube, there are other YouTube help channels out there. 
there are already people doing, you know, this whole thing. And, you know, I actually went through a process. I wasn't even making YouTube help content when I first started the channel. I did, you know, stuff just on like general, like, you know, how to stay motivated, you know, things like that. But I did do video related stuff, how to overcome camera shyness, how to come up with video ideas, but I wasn't necessarily targeting YouTubers at the time. I didn't even know that I should be doing that. So um, when I first started the channel, you know, there were other people that were, you know, having lots of success on YouTube. But one of the things that I did is I took the approach you know, I'm going to come at YouTube content creators as a creator, not as a coach, not as a, you know, anybody that's, you know, like, oh, hey, I'm up here coaching you on this. Like, I'm a creative person. I love doing all this stuff. Like, you know, I love just making stuff and, and all that. So like, I'm going to come at you like that way. Like, we're both into the creation side of things. So like, I'm coming at you that way, um, where everybody else is coming at you from like, hey, I'm here. I know all this stuff and you're down here and I'm trying to teach you, like, I'm like, hey, I'm creative. I'm going to teach you this stuff as well. And we're kind of rolling through this whole thing together. And that was like my approach on how I'm going to stand out. And I express that through how I communicate in general. I express that through like my set design. Um, I express that through how, you know, I just communicate, you know, all this information. Um, and I gave freely where a lot of people, you know, at that time, um, a lot of people were a little bit restrictive on some of the information. And, you know, I was just like, hey, I'm pulling the curtain back. And, you know, if I know it, then, you know, over time, you know, I'll, I'll share it on the channel. So, you know, when it comes to standing out, you know, it's just basically drawing those lines of, you know, like, how am I going to express myself? How am I going to get people into what it is that I'm doing? How am I going to, you know, what nuances am I going to have within the channel? We have the Nimenati, for example. That's another part of the deeper branding side of things is like naming the viewers, naming the community. And by doing that, then it also, um, you know, helps people in terms of like, you know, hey, it's Nimenati. I'm Nimenati, right? So then like sometimes when we're, when I'm on other live streams on other people's channels, and then, you know, people will come in and people will like hashtag Nimenati. Like doing those sites of things can also help you stand out uh, here on YouTube as well, because those are all the little nuances that other people can't do. Sure, people can do the thing with the M&Ms, but people can't, you know, represent, or they, not represent, but they can't like duplicate your community name, so to speak, and people, you know, respond to them the same way. For tools and resources to help you with your YouTube channel, make sure you check the links in the description of this video and to have your question answered live, join us Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern.